morning. Uh, yes, Ellis and Cresty reclaims commercial and industrial waste. We upcycle it, which means we convert it into items of higher value, we sell it, and then we give 50% of our profits to charities associated with our wastes. The first waste that I totally fell in love with in 2005 when I moved to the UK was the decommissioned fire hose of the London Fire Brigade. Um, I looked at it, I was like, gosh, it's waterproof, it's fireproof, it'll probably make really good roof tiles and started making a shed roof in it. Uh, didn't go into business as a roofer because there isn't enough fire hose waste annually globally to have a sustainable roofing business. There is enough to beat Louis Vuitton, so that's what we set out to do. Um, and are having a really good time of it because there's everything to, uh, to gain in the, in the fashion industry. You get to have a completely intimate relationship with your customers. Your belt stays on their jeans forever. You become a part of the stories that they tell people. It's a fantastic way to engage people with the environment and with the challenges that we all face. I think when we're talking about business and in the community and, and the roles that we have, I have the incredible privilege of um, I suppose not just getting to wear jeans <laughs> instead of a suit. Um, but I started my, my career in venture capital and I got to analyze all of these businesses and I got to look at lots of businesses that I couldn't possibly run because I couldn't sleep at night if I was associated with them. And I thought, how do I set up a business that I, not does no harm but is completely symbiotic with the planet? does incredibly exciting and engaging things to benefit people and benefit the planet. So I can go to sleep every night, I can be stoked about what I do, I can work the seven days a week that you have to when you're setting up a business, and it's gonna be fantastic. And that's why we came up with a business plan where we take waste and then we give half the, half the profits away. It's just, it generates good, it generates goodwill, it generates fantastic communities of engaged people. You know, I know that there are 33,000 fire service personnel in the UK. They all know about the firefighters charity. They all know about the donations that we make. And there's not many young handbag brands that have access to that kind of customer base, especially when they're spending about a thousand pounds a year on marketing. Um, so I think that's a privilege that I have. I don't have to transform an existing business. I don't have a bad legacy that I have to make good. We started with a good business model, and the more we grow, the better we will be for the community and for the planet. I think it's a lot trickier for big business to really examine where they are and look at how they can not just tack on a CSR program, because that was the last 10 years. I think CSR is, is dead now. Um, and where you have to go is beyond recycled paper and low energy light bulbs and really start doing revolutionary stuff. And that's the stuff of interface. And I hope all of you have read Ray's book about how to completely change how you make money for the betterment of, of the planet and for its people. Um, I guess I want companies to be a lot bolder. And I decided to come up with two sort of quick ways to do that. And, um, one of them is just plain diversity. You know, at board level, are there revolutionary environmentalists or social entrepreneurs on the boards of these big companies? And if not, why not? Um, I sat in on a, a group of female entrepreneurs that were advising Lord Davies last year about why there are so few women on boards. And I don't think it needs to stop with women. It's not just about sexual or cultural diversity. It's about diversity of ideas and you should put really, really crazy people on your boards. And, and, and I'm, I'm one of them. I volunteered my services. I said, look, I'll, I, you know, I'll be an advisor. I'll do whatever it takes because we have no time for small incremental change. We have to do really exciting things now. And the second thing I think that companies really have to do is, is prove it. So all of the amazing, incredible programs that that they talk about. They have to show exactly what they're doing. We have a big scale. When I bring waste in, we put it on the scale and we weigh it. We have open book accounting with our charity partners. They know exactly how much profit we're making, so they know exactly how much we're about to give to them. We have 10 wastes, 10 charity partners. It's a, it means that anybody who comes into my workshop knows exactly what we do. Any compromise that, that I make, they know exactly what that compromise is. And I'd love all business to stay, you know, this is the amount of, of money we're devoting to environmental change as a proportion of our profits. 
I think it would be very, very clear to people, and it would make it harder for them to be cynical about the power of business if business was willing to really open their doors and communicate effectively. Thank you.